So check this out. This episode was about these two chords. They're very interesting chords, but after looking at some of the numbers, I had a hunch. And so we fell down this other rabbit hole that I discovered the ratings don't tell us the whole story. Shocker, I know. Then we fell down another rabbit hole, so buckle up. No. No? No. Oh, come on. Where's your sense of humor? It has evolved fast to third grade. Sterling has some specialty accessory cord that we are gonna dive deep into today. What I have here in my hand is 5.9 millimeter power cord. And this is 5.4 millimeter VTX. This has a nylon sheath, the outside part of the rope, which is not too different from other accessory cords, but the inside, the core, is made out of Technora. And this has a Dyneema core and a polyester sheath. So now let's cut off some pieces and start testing it. Welcome to my store, where we sell things by the foot and have a cutting station. And I learned a few things with power cord that you might want to know. Inside of this thing, by the way, this is a ceramic knife, and it cuts this thing like butter. The Technora inside of this is uh, mm, separate from the sheath, which is how most ropes are, right? The problem, or the benefit to this, is it doesn't melt. Technora doesn't melt. So if you run this on a hot knife, a hot knife is not sharp, it's just hot. And so it literally won't cut it. If we were to just cut this and send this your way, by the time you got it, it would look probably like that and it comes out easily and that's kind of obnoxious. So we just pre-pull it out and then we will cut off about that much, milk the sheath back over it, and all of this is pure nylon. That gives me enough to hang on to and enough to cut and melt over the top of the Technora. So now that Technora is not gonna come out of there. Now VTX is similar, except Dyneema, watch this. It's not exactly how you want your rope to look. Now Dyneema will melt quite easily actually, except not to the polyester sheath, so then you have the same problem still. So you pull out this much, cut it off, melt the sheath, and make a melted polyester cap. And now that's not coming out. So let's cut off what I think we're going to use in our tests and then we can weigh it, since ironically, the weights for this aren't to be found anywhere online. Nineteen point seven kilonewtons is a big number for a tiny cord. Let's find out how strong it is. <laughs> to get the full strength out of a rope, you need to have it around something big and round, and so that's what we got. We got two of those things. Wow, that's impressive. Where'd it break, Bobby? Right here. There's no cord here, but I found it over here. Oh, there is nothing in here. Like that is really stiff. Tignor tears in an interesting way. Now let's see what VTX breaks at. Okay, that's really interesting. It slipped in a clove hitch with four wraps. So we got above MBS. A lot less friction in the system with this. Tested the same way we were seeing slipping here in the clove hitch that we didn't see with the power cord. I want to test the VTX again, except I am going to keep it from slipping this time. Wow! Well, I'm glad we did that again. That's a really impressive. Safety first. This is a fresh piece of power cord, and the sheath is supposed to protect the core, and the core is supposed to do the holding. And so what I like to find out is how strong the core is and how strong the sheath is by themselves. We are going to pull the support, and we are going to test them individually, starting with the sheath. That is incredibly more stretchy. Wow, I was expecting that to be way higher for how long that took. Well, they said it's a nylon sheath. Yep. I believe them. Super stretchy. Being that this is so stretchy, I would imagine that it isn't helping this all that much when you're pulling it to ultimate failure if you haven't pulled them apart from each other. So that is most of the strength. So this was back here. It breaks in the back of the diverter and Technora tears. It still feels soft. This plus this did not equal this. Let's try this on the VTX now. The polyester sheath is not as stretchy as nylon, so maybe they work together better. Oh, that's about the same. There is less of this than the other rope. Wow, it broke. Let's test the dynamo now. Whoa. What? Weird. Oh, no way. You're telling me there wasn't enough wraps on this? 
So diverters do rely on friction, but if you wrap the thing around enough, it should have enough friction. And it broke in my knot here. Dang it, might have to cut a whole nother piece. I wanna see how strong the Dyneema is. Uh... Wait, no it didn't. It did not break in the knot. Well, hot damn, get it? Because I think tightening and spinning around this generated enough heat to weaken it. This rope is all over the place. Granted, the core broke above its MBS, but wow. So we just noticed this pipe is getting deformed when it gets squeezed. This is not meant for what we're using it for. Shocker, I know. This is uh, usually mounted at the top of a climbing gym wall. And sometimes the anchor for lead climbing is here. So what you see on this side is the bottom. But I don't think it's supposed to look like this. Knots weaken a rope. In high-tech fibers, it tends to weaken the rope quite a bit. So let's find out how much of a loss we get from the full strength we were getting with the diverter. That's a bit lower. That's a bit lower. You broke in the knot down here. But now let's do the VTX in a figure eight. Broken the knot, leaving one little strand behind. Mm -hmm. Dyneema's breaking the way it's normally breaking. Now I can't consider this video conclusive for power cord versus VTX. If I didn't uh, break test more and th that makes the video pretty boring. And so basically we broke five figure eights and then I wanted to know how strong it was in a loop. And so we broke loops, five of each and each cord. But wait, there's more. We uh, don't know if power cord versus VTX is, is doing good. We can compare them to each other, but I wanted to compare them to normal accessory cord. I have a mess here. <laughs> I have nylon and polyester options in the store and so I wanted to see if or how much stronger they were. 19.7 kilonewtons for a skinny cord is a pretty stout claim, but this seven millimeter cord is rated for only 12.4 kilonewtons. Now as a consumer, I have always been surprised how little information there is about accessory cord. You, if you're lucky, will get an MBS number or minimum breaking strength, but that's about it. But now that I have a store, I am not surprised that a big organization is not going to take the time to do this. But I like nerding out on this. This power cord is more than 50% stronger than this 7mm nylon accessory cord. Or is it? If the only information you have is the minimum braking strength, uh, you would think that this is stronger. What? It's stronger? This 7 mils almost three times cheaper. Now on average, the nylon cord was 10% stronger, eight to eight, and about 5% stronger in a loop. Now, I found it interesting that the seven millimeter polyester cord was breaking substantially lower than the nylon, but that's just because a low stretch material is never going to perform in a knot well. When it takes that bend, the outer fibers are being stretched a lot more and they don't like to be stretched, hence it's low stretch. Now, it's interesting to see how many people buy power cord. I think, uh, it's pretty popular because it, it is fancy, it is nice, it is skinny, it's lightweight, and it's, whew, whew, it's expensive for what it is. <laughs> now, if you're only buying 18 to 20 feet for an anchor, eh, does a few bucks make a difference? Eh, some people it does. So what's funny is people buy the power cord to make strong quad anchors. And I kind of find it to be a stiff material and therefore a little bit more bulky than a 240 centimeter quad anchor made out of a Dyneema sling. All right, I can't help it. I wanna know what this breaks at in a quad versus a Dyneema sling. Minus one. So I keep track of my inventory very carefully because we ship the day you order and I take that very serious. And if I take it off the shelf to break it, I should make sure I take it off the, the computer. So this 240 centimeter sling is as big as I am. As I stand on it, it's about that big. So in order to make a quad anchor, which is a really nice anchor if you have two, a two bolt anchor station, let's say. You wanna put the sewn part near the top so when you tie an overhand knot, somewhere around here, you have about yay much on this side. And then you do the same thing on this side. And ideally, they're roughly the same. So when you clip a two bolt anchor, you clip two or three strands, whatever meets your fancy, and that is redundant. If one side fails, it stops at that knot. 
And you can also clip to the shelf of this quad up here, not maybe for falling on, but something to like dock a bag or something. Now this is a compact and lightweight anchor solution. It fits in my hand, but so does power cord, sort of. Now a 240 centimeter Dyneema sling is 75 grams and a 16 foot piece of power cord is 115. But wait, why would you need 487 centimeters of this when this is only 240? This is 480 centimeters of material and you still gotta tie knots in this since it's not sewn together. But wait, there's more. This is uh, relatively stiff and this doesn't quite hang down as far as the 240 centimeter because the stiffness requires the knots to be a little bit fatter. And so you end up getting something that's more similar to a, yes, you can do this out of a 180 centimeter sling. And this thing is only 56 grams. But either way, you can build a top rope anchor. You can, if you're in a big old situation, fix your rope. I like to have HMS carabiners up here so I can clip my personal anchor to it. And if I'm hauling, I like to haul from the high point. So I'll come from the back here. I use these, love the swivel, Petzl Protraction, haul, and then I've got this second location to dock a bag. And if I don't want to carry my backpack anymore, if I'm sport climbing, you can use this shelf. Now the question is, how strong is all this? Broke in one of the overhand knots. I guess we could pull this one if we wanted to. So it was like this but then these slid out and it came undone. And what happens if I clip the shelf? It started to slip at eight kilonewtons. So it broke here in the knot. Let's pull here on the shelf with enough cord to give it a fighting chance. Whoa, that is crazy. Only one strand had to break for that entire shelf to come undone. Uh, it's a pretty good shelf. 28 versus 32, pretty good. We also tested the 10 mil Dynex from Black Diamond in a quad, which is what the 180 centimeter was. And it was getting 40 kilonewtons. And you can check out that episode if you want as well. And for 18 feet of power cord is 3042 and a 240 centimeter slings about $30. So those are about the same. Now I noticed more people buy power cord than BTX. So I'm curious, what people are using VTX for. Now, the reason I was able to go so deep in this is because one of my supporters, Walt Waldo, donated specifically to make this thing happen. So thank you very much, because I personally too am curious about this stuff. Now, if you want to help support the silly things we do around here, the links for that will be in the description. Now, if you want to see more interesting stuff about power cord, I tested this with Tom Penley as he uses it for back ties to help stabilize a monopod when they do search and rescue. Now they don't want that to be stretchy so that thing doesn't wiggle around all that much and this stuff is strong-ish and so we tested that with him and it was five years old and we got some interesting results because of that. And you can go check out that episode next. Well, that was louder.